Greetings Red Wolf Nation and welcome to Inside IUE Sports. It's almost soccer season and here today to introduce the 2019 IU East women's soccer team is the Red Wolves head coach Shane Meredith. So coach, uh, thank you so much for, for coming in to join us. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, before we look too far ahead to next year, we'll look back ever so briefly at last year. 12-4-4 uh, and four record. Uh, the goals, or the losses I should say, were all by only one goal. Uh, no one beat you 11-on-11 11 11 after September 22nd. Uh, everything was either a tie or a shoot. Delta. You, you brought that up. I didn't. <laughs> but, uh, and it was just the program's second season, which sometimes we lose sight of. So uh, in right. your mind, some of the, the highlights from last year. Well, certainly uh, we could have been better early in the season, and uh, but they didn't get down. We had some results that weren't great, even a win or two that we didn't play real well. And, um, you know, credit to the, uh, the team that they came together. And that game that you alluded to, where we lost a game, that uh, there there was um, there was an issue with the with the refereeing and stuff, and, and they acknowledged that. But uh, our, our kids came together and and bonded, and uh, they were on a mission. And so we we feel good about where we were last year and what we achieved and and who we were. So with that in mind, uh, a lot of positive things leading into this year. Just what are you most looking forward to about this coming season? I, I'm looking for uh, the next step in uh, what training sessions are like, what are games like as far as accountability, as far as the players themselves leading the way, uh, the players holding one another and themselves accountable. And these aren't now my goals necessarily. Hey, let's do this, let's do that, where it was three years ago. It's, it's really their goals, and, and they have got to put it all on the line every day. And so I'm excited to see this morning, Monday morning, had a day off yesterday. They, they were tremendous and, and held each other to a high standard, and, and we need to do that throughout the, the course of the season for us to uh, win a conference championship. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and meet the team. Uh, 29 players on the roster this year. We're yep. going to talk about some of their on-the-field talents and also learn some of their off-the-field talents as well. Great, so, great. Um, with that in mind, uh, uh, we don't have a whole lot of contract negotiations here in the IU East Athletic Department, but if uh, you had a contract negotiation, uh, someone on your team that you would trust to be your agent to negotiate that contract. I think there's a few folks that could probably do that, and, and uh, I won't pick a business major, but uh, Nicole Vissi, who is uh, uh, actually, she's in Arizona right now, uh, scoping out some med school stuff, that uh, she is uh, mature beyond her years, and I, I think she could represent myself and uh, the, the program pretty darn well in a contract negotiation. And uh, part of your goalkeeper core on the, on the field. Then. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, then uh, it's kind of another off the field question. Uh, um, you bring everyone in early for preseason camp, obviously, so there's got to be some fun times as well. So uh, if you were just organizing a summer outing to go on with this, a uh, couple people you might trust to organize that summer outing. Um, that's, that's a great question. Last week we gave them the after, afternoon off and uh, um, Ashlyn and Anna Black uh, from across the, uh, the, the border there, the Ohio border, had everybody over for some boating and some uh, a cookout and stuff. Uh, the, the team had a great time and those guys and their mother, Misty Black, were really, really welcoming and um, it was top notch. So. And uh, you mentioned uh, twin sisters from Eaton. The, their role on the field, I believe one's a keeper and yeah. one plays out in the yeah, field. Yeah, Ashlyn's going to challenge to be our starting goalkeeper, and she's young. Uh, but I get on her every day about, hey, you got to act like this is your job. And, and, and she has all the tools to do it. Uh, she's got the team behind her and all that. We just need to see that. And, and she's, doing, uh, she, she's doing a fine job. And, and Anna, who um, is battling a little bit of a, 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 an injury right right now works really, really hard, and she'll be a midfielder for us, and uh, also somebody that, in a pinch, I feel like we could put in a lot of different positions, and, and she's a good athlete and played basketball. They both played basketball at Eaton High School, so uh, uh, no, those, those guys are great addition to our team. Okay. Uh, very unusual. Let's, uh, let's say you were overseas, uh, doesn't necessarily matter where, but who would you want or trust as your guide if you were, uh, if you were overseas? Well, it does matter where we would be, Kyle, because um, 
I guess if it were Peru, the, this summer Andrea Hernandez, uh, who's our manager, uh, spent uh, a month or so in Peru and, and Angeli did some coursework here through IUE in Spain and of course they're Puerto Rican so they're Spanish speaking. But Alicia Shrink, uh, if I recall correctly, she uh, speaks German. So if we're over in Germany then, then it's got to be Alicia and Alicia is, is this really uh, cool, mellow, uh, person that I think if we're in a foreign country that that mellowness and that just uh, subdued attitude could get us through some rocky times and stuff so um, and uh, Angeli you know has played in the midfield for us and and some in the back and she's still uh, doing some great stuff and and we're going to uh, look for her in our midfield, although this year we might play more three in the midfield and and uh, so who knows uh, maybe she even gets up top wide. Uh, and Alicia, who battled an, back from an injury two years ago, I think is gaining her confidence back in that injury. And really, uh, this morning she had a great, great morning, battling, winning balls, uh, being really positive when she was on the ball. So, if it ever came to it, if you had to put a someone who's not traditionally listed as a keeper in goal, uh, someone you might pick to to play keeper if it came to that. Yeah, uh, Gabby Mitchum. Um, from just uh, south of here in Brookville, Indiana. Uh, Gabby has done great stuff on the field in our scrimmage against Iwu. Was probably our, well, she was our most active uh, front, our forward. Uh, created a lot of uh, havoc um, uh, for Iwu defenders. But she's somebody that played softball, basketball in high school, and, and uh, who knows, maybe we might see her in there from time to time. So Gabby Mitchum is, is a good all-around athlete. So this next question, uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of opportunities to see who really can do this, but uh, who would you pick to have the best post-goal celebration? Um, golly, I can't give you one. Uh, if it's going to be um, just your average goal, um, we got to have Olivia Malat because she's got a lot, you know, she's a forward, she gets lots of chances, she scores goals, but she appreciates scoring goals and knows how hard that is to achieve. She's not just going to run back to the half line. Uh, I would love it if KK won, had a match winning goal, uh, because KK would celebrate and dance and might get the crowd dancing with her. Uh, th that, would be, that would be great. And then, you know, uh, she hasn't scored a lot, and right now she's getting minutes for us in the back, but uh, Emily Myers, who um, is a little bit more on the shy side, but I would love to see her score a goal because um, it would be a moment where a lot of team members would come around her and 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 um, and celebrate with her and, and and that. So one of those three, and depending on the moment, you know. So and as I said, hopefully get plenty of chances to for everyone to try that. Out. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> um, someone most likely, if you heard that a certain person went skydiving or rock climbing, you wouldn't even bat an eye because you know that's uh, something that they're adventurous and enjoy doing. Well, I heard this summer the uh, Abby Conway, who is. Uh, um, from England and uh, played at Cloud uh, uh, Community College uh, the past couple years. I think this she went to Miami this summer and was doing paragliding and she has skydived and stuff. Uh, yeah, I think she's a, a, a thrill seeker and um, she's uh, a forward for us and I hope that she uh, looks for that thrill seeking on the field <laughs> as well because uh, she's got the capability uh, technically but also she's got the pace and and uh, uh, but no she's she's the one that would uh, I got to stay away from I'm not doing that stuff but she would be the one that drags some people into some uh, scary stuff okay. um, more of a soccer question here uh, 30 seconds left you're down one goal you've got a free kick from 30 yards out uh, who do you want taking it if you've watched this play, you'll know it's Ellie Gunther. And uh, the only thing I say to Ellie is get your money's worth and uh, test the wall because a lot of times too many players hit it over the top. Ellie is on frame nearly all the time. And those poor folks in the wall uh, for the opposition, I fear for their their uh, uh, their safety because she, she is accurate and she's got a cannon. And so it, we will continue to give Ellie those chances uh, because she is she's deadly. If you lined up the whole team, um, 100 meter dash, uh, who wins it? 
Uh, maybe we need to try that tomorrow morning. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Kayla Amadon went healthy, is is going to be up there. Tori Martino is going to challenge for that. Priscilla Carvajal, um, who has played in the back for us, she's a front runner, but played in the back. Uh, Olivia Malad. We we've got more pace this year than we've had in the past, and so that's a great question. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll have to test that out. So. <laughs> and several of those uh, have been key contributors in the past. Uh, Kayla, and Tori's new. Uh, Priscilla's played it a lot, and Olivia's obviously played a lot as well. So, so. Yeah, well, and, and Priscilla came in as a, uh, a wide player, mainly up top, and that is something that she, um, uh, she'd rather be there, and, and, and that's fine, but she has said, I'll, I'll play where you want me to play, and last year developed into a fine outside back. One of the things I love about her pace is that as an outside back, we can get her forward. If we lose possession, we're going to have the ability to get back and help our center backs in a quick way win the ball back or at least get organized. Um, so they, we're probably going to see Priscilla still at the back and, and who knows, maybe as a winger for us uh, where she's most comfortable. Um, and then Tori was in that mix. Tori Martino is, uh, she'll be a junior, uh, transferred in from uh, Daytona uh, State College, yes, in Florida. Um, and uh, she's, she's going to be a midfielder uh, forward for us and uh, has great pace and technical ability and strikes a, a great ball. and. And, and, and is a really good leader, and, and we're, we're excited to have Tori uh, join this, this, this team. If you had one of your players, if you were going to put him up in the booth, the broadcast booth, or in this chair to broadcast a match or host this show, uh, who would you trust to do that? That's Deanna, and Deanna has done some basketball games and has broadcast. Hey, she's been on the field and played nearly 90 minutes, and then jumps up and and does c color commentary. I think for you guys up in uh, for the men's game. That is true. And yes. so, and that's not easy. I mean, that's uh, an exhausting match, and she's in the center of the midfield usually, and so that's exhausting and then she pops up and does a great job. But one of the things, Deanna, I mean, if you're around her, you know, most of the time she is really smiling and upbeat and has personality in a great way. And that is, could be a, a career uh, uh, choice or move for her and uh, because I think she could be really good with, with a lot of repetitions. Okay. I don't know if IU East has a debate club. I know we have tons of clubs and organizations, but uh, if we did have a debate club, uh, who would you trust to deliver that final argument to, to win a club debate? Well, if it's against me, all of them, because they, <laughs> they're always debating and they're always winning, it seems, at least in my mind. Um, I had a player, uh, Kara Barlow, who is a uh, freshman, and she uh, um, she's a natural science and math uh, major and wants to go to a PA school. Uh, but I'll tell you, one day she did not wear the proper shorts, one of the very first days, and she's kind of quiet and subdued. And I looked over to her and I said, hey, nice Adidas shorts. And I said, uh, our Nike contract, you know, might, uh, might get spoiled if they see you with those Adidas shorts. So, and she said, sorry, I'll, I'll wear the right ones tomorrow. And I walked past the group and to go set up the session. And in the backpack that I put our pennies in, it was an Adidas backpack. And she turned around and said, Hey, nice Adidas backpack. And so she's very, she's a bit, she's very subdued and, and doesn't speak a whole lot, but is very bright. And I have a feeling that she could be deadly in uh, a debate. Okay. And then uh, maybe some truth behind this next one. Uh, if you had to trust someone to organize a community betterment event, like a blood drive or something of that yeah. nature, who would you trust to do that? Well, that's Rachel Burgess. And she spent, I believe, two and a half weeks uh, out on the East Coast uh, with um, the Red Cross mm -hmm. and um, doing some work with them. And, and she's active uh, now. Uh, getting blood drives started and she'll be more active on campus here with that and beyond. Um, she's also, uh, she's a very uh, giving and, and, and kind person and she's part of our FCA here and um, she, she, she does a lot here on campus and a lot of volunteer work. So no, that's definitely Rachel Burgess. Okay. And off the field question, uh, who do you trust to clean your desk? No, 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 no. We're not going there. No, let's, um, that desk is mine and, and just leave that be and we'll all be happy. So, yeah. yeah.
Okay, well, on that note, uh, we've met about half the team. We'll come back and meet the second half right here on Inside IUE Sports. What can I do for you today? My throat's been hurting all day, and I have class in an hour. Okay, let's get you feeling better. Receive quality care without the wait. Read Health Now right beside you. Hi. How can I help you? My daughter has a fever and she isn't feeling well. Okay, let's get her feeling better. Receive quality care within the comfort of your own home. Read Health Now, right beside you. I have had the pleasure of taking care of probably 35,000 cataract patients. It really is meaningful to people. It changes their lives. It gives them back things that, that they hold dear. It seems like you can't do anything without proper banking help. I've had a very good experience working with First Bank. You have people that you know and you grow a relationship with. I just have the confidence that the banking part of it will be okay. Down with a shot and goal! IU East Red Wolves shot. Goal! IU East Red Wolves. Welcome back to Inside IU East Sports. We are meeting the 2019 IU East women's soccer team with Coach Shane Meredith, learning a little bit about some of their on-the-field skills and some of their off-the-field talents. So uh, we've met the first half of the roster. Let's meet uh, uh, the remaining half. So uh, leading off, you all have to kill a lot of time on buses on road trips. I'm sure there's some cards or some euchre being played. Uh, uh, best euchre partner out of the, the group you have. Uh, Ryan Woodard. She's my partner and she will be my partner uh, at least until she graduates. So uh, sorry Alyssa Couch, but Ryan Woodard's uh, <laughs> the best Euchre partner. And that means you win, I take it. We're going to win, yeah. <laughs> Put money on it. All right. Uh, on the field, uh, Ryan's contributions. Uh, you know, Ryan's been injured a little bit and, and battling uh, some things, but uh, she's a central midfielder who is very, she was three time All State in Ohio, and she is technically uh, gifted. And, and so when she, we are playing quickly and she is playing quickly, she can do some real damage in the center of the midfield. Okay. Um, so if you uh, had to trust someone on your team to cook a meal, a good meal for the Meredith household, uh, who would you entrust that to? I think Darcy and I would really love some Caribbean, and, and we're going to go with Larissa Gray. I don't know if she'd be comfortable doing that, but uh, I know she cooks for some for herself and some friends. But uh, no, we will go Caribbean with Larissa Gray. Okay. I know uh, injuries and, have hampered her on the field, but uh, the contributions she's been able to make. Uh, um, Injuries have, have uh, really overshadowed what she could have uh, done, and I don't know if she'll get on the field. She's still hampered by some of this, but I'll tell you, she is, uh, she's a great teammate and very supportive. The other day she hollered a little bit on the, uh, she's quiet, but she hollered on the side, from the sidelines the other day, and I thought that was so, so special. It was a great moment that she felt comfortable, and um, the, 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 the players will listen to Larissa, and, and we're, we're fortunate to have had her in this program. Uh, Y'all's uh, team GPA was quite solid this past school year, so yep. a lot of candidates for this, but if you had to have someone ace a math test for you, who would you trust to ace that math test? Um, center back Brooke uh, Conway, um, or as I mentioned earlier, our newbie Cara Barlow. Uh, I, I gotta believe, I, I gotta put those guys in the seat and let them uh, take the test. I think those guys would do uh, a good job, and 
uh, just like Brooke is really, really steady on the field, has started all but one game here in the last two years. Um, she is close to a 4.0, and, and uh, Kara Barlow is going to do the same thing. So I feel comfortable with either of those guys. Right. Uh, sticking on kind of an academics theme, uh, one of the players on your team, if you had to pick them to teach in one of your daughter's classrooms, uh, who would you trust to, to teach your daughter's class? Uh, London Fiesel. Uh, London is an ed major, and we're going to miss her a little bit of practices because she's going to be observing uh, uh, in the classroom, but uh, we'll do her student teaching in the spring. She is a kind and very patient uh, uh, and confident young woman. She is going to be a great teacher, and I've said to her and her parents when she needs a letter of recommendation, she's going to have a, a glowing one from me. She'll be outstanding teacher. And on the field, where are we going to see London this year? Uh, London's going to, you know, we, we've uh, talked about playing her at the back a little bit because she's such a good striker of the ball, uh, both left and uh, right uh, feet. And um, um, But we're still, her biggest strength is probably as a target striker in, in a three front. And so that that's where you're going to uh, probably see her for now. Your schedule, for the most part, it's 18 matches in two months, so being able to play through bumps and bruises is a, a thing. Uh, so yeah. uh, from what you've seen, uh, kind of the highest pain tolerance uh, on your group? Um, highest pain tolerance, uh, you know, we're going to go with probably with uh, uh, Gabby Mitchum or um, uh, Nikki Mittenthal. Um, so th those guys really uh, have taken some knocks. Um, uh, Mia uh, Corbett. Holy smokes, she got injured last year and was down, and, and uh, or was it two years ago? And, and the trainer asked how she was, and she kind of popped back up. Well, it turned out not to be, uh, it, it was pretty serious. So uh, Mia, Mia Corbett is, is up there too with those, uh, those that are able to take uh, some pain and, and, and work through it. And again, it, you talked about through the, it's a long season and players that can play through a little bit of gimpiness and, and soreness, uh, it, that's of real value to us. Uh, you do some distance running yourself, so you've got some expertise maybe on this next yeah. one. But uh, if your whole team lined up to run a marathon, who wins it? Uh, Abby Creech from uh, just across the border in Ohio, and she's transferred in um, from Mount Vernon Nazarene uh, in Ohio. Um, she was an 800-meter runner, I believe, in, in, in high school, maybe 400-meter. Um, she is a tough cookie, and she would find a way to win a marathon. She would gut it out. She'd find a way to win, and uh, um, uh, she is. Uh, she's coming off uh, a summer surgery, but doing great. Uh, she can play multiple positions on our field, and um, we're, we're we're excited to have her. She's got pace. She's got grit. She's got a smile on her face all the time. She's willing to do anything that's asked of her, and and uh, so she's probably going to win the marathon. Okay. Um, so every team has it. someone who just knows the records of every other team in the conference, knows the records and rankings of everyone in the nation. Um, who's that person on your team that's just going to know the conference standings at any given moment? Yeah, I'd probably go with Jordan Prim. Uh, I, well, I would go. I would, in the bus, I'd probably go back and say, what do we have to do to secure this number one seed or whatever? She is on top of that. Um, follows in her father's footsteps of, of tracking players and tracking uh, the standings and that. And I'll tell you, Jordan was asked to do something her first year here, play out of position. And she, uh, she did it for the team, though it wasn't the best for her. Uh, last year, we asked her to play up top where she's most comfortable and struggled with some things that I was uh, wanting to, her to do. She has been uh, tremendous this preseason. So there's a player also um, for you to watch have a really good season. And, and uh, so um, it's a long-winded answer. But uh, no, she knows the standings, and, and, and she knows the game of soccer. Right. Uh, must win 50-50 ball, another soccer question. Uh, who do you trust to win that 50-50 ball? Uh, Nikki Mittenthal, uh, who's a goalkeeper that plays in goal. Uh, um, a goalkeeper, but she can also play in the field. She, uh, yeah, don't don't get in the way of uh, her and the ball. Uh, she uh, is a great uh, winner of uh, uh, um, you know 
challenge and challenging for balls. Kelsey Joseph in the air is uh, tremendous as well. Kelsey's um, Nikki's been with us for a couple years now and is from Richmond High School. Uh, Kelsey's from Middletown, Ohio, transferred in from Cincinnati State. Uh, challenge a ball in the air, and, and maybe that's Kelsey Joseph. Um, both of those guys I, I, I like in our chances at 50 50 balls. Right. So. And then, uh, um, obviously, a lot of video games get played around campus, a lot of opportunities, and a lot of fun. Maybe I indulge a little myself, but uh, if you had a team-wide uh, video game tournament, uh, who do you think wins it? Oh, it's, uh, without a doubt, Alyssa Couch. And uh, now she's rooming with uh, Emily Myers. And uh, my, my gut is, is those guys. I got money on those two. Those, uh, Alyssa, who uh, um, has been a forward for us, um, uh, and is battling injury a little bit, but but her and Emily, they're going to win that uh, video game. Okay. So. Go to Disney World much? Uh, I haven't been to Disney World because uh, all the commotion and the, uh, um, I act like an extrovert, but I'm really an introvert, and so that's that's a little crazy. Um, but I'll tell you, if 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 we go to uh, Disney World or Disneyland or a theme park. Uh, Lexi Berkeley, if she is not Scooby-Doo or one of the characters dressed up, she is, has, and I mean this in the best way, she is, she's got a childlike playfulness attitude about her that's incredible, and, and so she would probably be a really fun tour guide. So or she'd to be go your with. guide if you took Yeah, I, I, I think so. Okay. All righty. Uh, got a few minutes, just uh, any kind of message to the community on why they should come and see this team play this year? Well, I, 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 when I walked in the door, it was um, crazy to think it was four years ago that we had this, uh, you know, my first time that you interviewed me. And, and uh, I said, hey, we wanted to earn uh, the right or the respect from people to come out and watch us play. And our, our, our players, our young women are doing great stuff in the community. We got people volunteering uh, at the help shelter over uh, at um, uh, Richmond High School. Uh, we're doing well in the classroom, well above uh, three, and we're gonna do even better this year. But on the field, we're gonna, again, try to play an attractive brand of soccer. Um, uh, and you're gonna see a little bit more pace from us this year, a little bit more athleticism. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I would think you'd wanna come out and, and uh, watch our team play. All right, well, we're looking forward to it. Coach, thank you so much for introducing your roster. Thank you. It all starts on August 25th, a 2 p.m. home match at Centerville High School. That'll be against Lawrence Tech, and you can check out the full schedule at iueredwolves.com. Thank you so much to Coach Meredith, and thank you for joining us on Inside IUE Sports. We'll see you next time. <laughs>